thinks it's very close uh, to everybody in our membership because a lot of us are small businesses. A lot of us have uh, businesses of our own or work for people that have small businesses or know people that have small businesses. And today, the government of Ontario has been doing a lot of work around helping small business. And today, we have our, our uh, uh, um, small business and red tape reduction minister, the Honorable Prabhmeet Singh Sarkaria, who is going to be joining us shortly. He is on his way, and um, and uh, we will give him a couple of minutes. Obviously, he here. is helping people. He is helping businesses. And from what I heard, he has been uh, traveling around the province. As we know, uh, also has been uh, the premier, Doug Ford. So um, the rest of the people today would be uh, Pramod Goyal, who is the president of the Indo-Canadian Chamber of Commerce. We also have uh, uh, AJ Tandon, who is the director of the Indo-Canadian Chamber of Commerce, who would be our moderator today. And um, um, yours, yours truly, VJ Thomas, that's me, uh, will be, um, you know, making the introductions. And, and towards the end, uh, we'll also, you know, thank our sponsors. Um, so going to the next slide. VJ, I, I just wanted to note that I'm here now. My apologies. I was a bit late. Okay. Yeah, sorry thank about you. that. Thank you very much, Prameet um, Singh uh, Sakarya. Thank you very much, sir, for, for joining us. And um, and we have a, an eager audience on Facebook that's wanting to, to listen to what you have to say. So, so again, today, thank you very much. And, and today, we, without further ado, we'll move on to what the program will be. So the program today uh, will be, um, you know, we're going to talk about the reopening of Ontario's economic um, uh, economy and how that's being done. Uh, we have the minister from the horse's mouth. We, we can talk to the minister and, and know how it's being opened. So a lot of you who are in the audience today probably know about how except for the GTA in Northern Ontario, all the other regions are almost back to normal. And we've been told the GTA and, and Southern Ontario will, will also be, um, you know, getting to normal very soon. Um, and also, you know, we, we will be talking, we'll have an interactive session with uh, Minister Sarkaria, where the, the um, Pramod Goel, on behalf of the Indo-Canadian Chamber of Commerce, will be asking him questions. We also have um, AJ Tandon who would be taking questions from the audience and putting them across to, to Minister Sakaria. So, so moving on, as, as we as we as we move on, uh, we 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 have a special message. I think the message is not in as yet, but I'll leave AJ to to let you know if the message is here or not from Doug Ford. Uh, we have a special address on the reopening of Ontario's economy by uh, uh, the the Honourable uh, Minister Sakaria. And then Q and A's with with uh, with the ITPC and three Q and A's with the audience. So those of you in the audience on Facebook, all you need to do uh, for for to get your questions answered by the honourable minister is to send in your questions in the comment section, and we will send them over to the minister. So please, um, you know, send in those questions, and we'll make sure they're answered. Now, coming to the next one that we want to get out of the way is. The disclaimer, I'll, I'll leave, leave you guys to read this disclaimer on your side, but essentially what it means is, um, you know, the, the comments expressed by the people here are their own. It's nothing to do with Indo-Canadian Chamber of Commerce, and, and we do not endorse anything here. So, you know, I'll leave you guys to read that uh, for another few seconds, and once that's done, we will move on to our next a speaker, uh, the, the IEEC Small Business Assist Program. The IEEC Small Business Assist Program is something that the Indo-Canadian Chamber of Commerce started. And what does the IEEC Small Business Assist Program do? What it does is it connects people that need assistance. It could be, you know, uh, technology assistance, could be um, accounting assistance, could be finance. So we have a lot of people within the Indo-Canadian Chamber of Commerce uh, on our board as well as in our membership that are experts in this field. And then as people send in queries, and, and for that, all you've got to do is send in an email to, to ICCC at icconline.org, and, and we will connect you to an expert. So, so, so this is something that we, we highly recommend that anybody that has any questions or need to do, 
and it's free. The first 30 minutes is free, and, and we think that's usually what you need. Uh, you need some assistance. You need a sounding board. We have people in our membership that can speak to you about that. So moving to our next, uh, um, to, to, to getting into the actual meat of the program, I would like to introduce AJ Tandon, Director of Indo-Korean Chamber of Commerce, who is going to be our moderator. And over to you, AJ. Please take it over from here. Over to you, AJ. Honor to host an event uh, like this. I've always believed in one thing means for any body, like if country is a body, you will look into the health of the body by looking at his heart, right? But you look into the heartbeat, how fast that heartbeat is, how fast it is running, how good it is, that's what judges the economy as well. And if you want to look at the heartbeat of Canada, I think Ontario is the heartbeat of Ontario. And we are now sitting into a discussion which is the very one very important it aligns well with indo canada chamber of commerce as well we look after small businesses and that exactly is what we are worried about and we want to make sure that is where we want to be looking into the growth factor is looking into growing so we want to discuss on that matter now covid 19 has affected everyone so there's no one which is spared across the globe but this has also given us opportunity to look back and see how we can improve into our life, into our businesses, into our relationship, everything that we can do. This is where we can actually start rebuilding the nation. Canada is strong. Ontario is strong. Today we will be working towards how the third phase and how the Ontario small businesses will be benefiting. So without further ado, I would like to go ahead and introduce what the program is going to be look like. And we were planning to have a great uh, coming a speech from Mr. Our Honorable Premier Doug Ford. But guess what? He's a man on the road. He's a man who wants to serve Ontarians. He's right now in Windsor. We just had a discussion with his uh, colleagues and they have told us they apologized. But they said he's right now helping the small businesses in Windsor, which is also one of the hardest hit because everybody's been asking about the question about the border. Guess what? He's at the front line looking after that. So we sent kudos to the minister for that. And we look forward to his message, which will be coming to us in the next couple of days. And we'll be airing it for every audience member that will be listening to us. Now, moving forward for that, now I take an absolute immense pleasure to introduce our Honorable Minister Prabhmeet Sarkaria, who looks after Ontario's Associate Minister of Small Businesses and Red Tape Reduction. Very important portfolio. But giving you a quick brief on Minister Sarkaria, I've met him a few times. I've always uh, considered him to be one of the most humble minister who is dedicated to public service. So I really appreciate you joining us, uh, Minister. But he's also been a member of parliament for Brampton South, serving the people of Ontario as the associate minister. Before he joined the public service, he's a qualified lawyer. You don't want to be ahead of him when you're talking law. So he knows those very well. He was working with Miller Thompson. He earned his law degree from University of Windsor. That's where our premier is today as a bachelor of um, administration from there from Laurier. He majored in finance. Prior to his legal career, he worked in TD Securities. He's a passionate community member, and that's what is all everyone says about him. He's an active volunteer, so you'll always find him in many events. He served the city of Brampton from uh, Property Standards Committee, as well as on the board of directors for Hockey of for Humanity and Karma Grow. I would like to know more about that. He's an avid sports fan like any Canadian. He loves hockey, basketball, baseball, football, and I think his one of his proudest moments was the 2019 NBA championship. I think we aren't we the champion right now, reigning all the way till 2021. Minister, I would like to know more about that as well. Minister has always been believing in public service, and he's been a strong advocate for hardworking families in Brampton South and all across the province. He loves and is committed to giving voice to concern to every person who's working. And like I said, one thing everybody will be talking about him, he's a humble servant to the community. So thank you, Minister. I will also take the opportunity to introduce my colleague who will be joining us as well, our President and Board Chair, Mr. Pramod Goel. He is a, an actual game changer in the Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce. He's a dynamic and entrepreneur, business strategist, and a highly experienced management consultant with over 30 years in founding, managing, advising growth companies 
including strategy consulting, finance management, you name it. This man has seen a lot of company building, so he knows the crux of the small businesses and the right person to be the president for us. He's currently the president and CEO of Canada Wide Financial Corporation, a multidisciplinary business uh, corporation. He is in the past has held many senior roles in Investco, Royal Bank of Canada, Scotia Bank, Acer Telecom. He earned his Bachelor of Science and Postgraduate di Diploma in Internal Audit from University of Delhi and Master Business Administration from Northwestern and York University. So he's a great person to be around with us at the chamber because of his absolute wider audience that he works with communities all around. So we welcome our president and chair as well, Mr. Pramod Goel. But before, without further ado, I would request Minister Sikoria to please go ahead and we are all looking forward to hear from you. This is an evening, we all want to hear from you. So please, Minister Sikoria, it's an honor welcoming you to Indo-Canada Chambers event where we are going to know what's next. Thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much. Uh, can you hear and see me, everyone? Absolutely, sir. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, Jay, and I really appreciate the opportunity and the very kind introduction uh, uh, that uh, you have provided uh, for me. I want to take the first take an opportunity to thank all the ICC for all of their Indo-Canadian Chamber of Commerce for all the great work that they've been doing. Um, uh, and not just uh, during COVID, uh, many of your members have uh, done incredible work, given back to the community during these very tough uh, times, um, but uh, also in general, uh, uh, all the great work that you do trying to foster better relations uh, between both of our countries uh, and also making sure that uh, uh, the voice of the Chamber of Commerce is heard in all levels of government, whether it's municipal, provincial, or federal. Uh, so I also uh, give a big shout out to the president, uh, Pramod Goyal, for all the great work that he is doing uh, leading uh, your organization. So thank you very much uh, once again for giving me the opportunity and it's, I'm very grateful to be able to join you. Um, you know, there's no secret that uh, this pandemic has had uh, sweeping economic uh, effects. It's touched every single corner uh, of the province, the country and the world. Uh, and it's been a long and, and very hard road, I think. And through it all, businesses, um, you know, as members of the, the Indo-Canadian Chamber of Commerce have really led the way, you know, whether it was at the start temporarily shutting down operations, you know, adopting physical distancing uh, practices, keeping employees safe, employers, customers safe, or sh even shifting operations online. Uh, you know, many of you have gone above and beyond um, to serve the people uh, of Ontario, uh, to serve your uh, clients, to serve your customers, uh, your businesses and your families. Uh, so I just want to once again take the opportunity to acknowledge uh, what all of you have done to keep this uh, uh, economy going and to keep this uh, economy safe. Uh, you know, now we're at a stage where we see the risk uh, of uh, that it continues to decline for Ontario. Um, and so we're trying to open up the economy. We re we're rebuilding in innovative ways and um, trying to address the current issues uh, that are coming up. Uh, uh, and as a government, we really want to be there to support in this uh, initiative and in this period of recovery uh, to prepare businesses for new opportunities that might lay ahead and also uh, opportunities that are on the horizon. Um, and I think to do so, one of the biggest things that we can do is really listen to small business owners across the province and see what are some of the supports that we can deliver? What are some of the supports that we can bring forward uh, that can help uh, businesses now? Um, I've had the opportunity to participate uh, in, with some and myself uh, uh, in about 80 uh, business panels uh, that uh, uh, including, you know, whether it's from the restaurant uh, to the manufacturers, to the main street businesses, uh, you know, to the small shops like salons or, or whatever, whatnot. We've held over 80 roundtables, hundreds of businesses, thousands of businesses have delegated to the government uh, um, and we're learning their stories. And, and sometimes we come across very heartbreaking stories. Um, but, you know, it's a part of uh, an opportunity for us to really get this economy back on track. And we're really focusing on that. And when we get back into the legislature just a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, there's a key couple of planks that we've really uh, tried to drive uh, economic growth. You know, on July 7th, we passed the Building Transit Faster Act. And, you know, this is a piece of legislation that is going to allow us um, to accelerate economic growth in the province by building key infrastructure projects. So uh, when we're talking about uh, uh, you know, things like building subway stations, that's going to be very important for us. Uh, uh, the $30 billion infrastructure project across the GTA that will support so many. Uh, but initially when, you know, the, we didn't really know what we were dealing with, uh, Ontario's action plan, uh, you know, was a quick response to 
uh, COVID-19. It was about $10 billion in support for businesses, you know, which included about $6 billion in relief by temporary deferring taxes for about 100,000 businesses. Uh, we also uh, accumulated about $1.9 billion uh, in deferral payments uh, for Workplace Safety and Insurance Board and about $1.8 billion to defer uh, municipal education property taxes for some of our um, uh, business owners. You know, we also committed to about $241 million for the federal government for a total of about $900 million in Ontario towards a commercial rent uh, assistance program to help businesses that have seen a 70% decline um, in revenues, uh, having the opportunity to participate uh, and get up to 75% of their rent uh, claims. So um, we also had to pause uh, for those who did qualify for that program, uh, commercial evictions to better support those uh, business owners as well. But we know we continue to look forward to and uh, see where we can make an impact. So even through a regulatory lens, we look at opportunities. We launched the Tackling uh, the Barriers uh, website where we've seen over 1,200 submissions for businesses that are pitching us on ideas around regulatory modernization and how government can digitize better uh, or digitize their operations uh, a bit better. Um, and so we were able to announce a pretty neat piece of legislation as well last week that is really called the COVID Recovery Act. And that's gonna see um, that tons of projects get off the road. It's gonna see a new approach to government uh, uh, by focusing on ensuring that regulations are be you know, better for people and smarter uh, for business as well. So I think, you know, what one of the things that we really want to dwell into here is as we look to the future, as we look to the reopening of the economy, stage three, as of today, is launched across uh, many regions uh, of the province, not all regions. So for the Peel region, the GTA, prom, you know, prominently, um, you haven't hit the stage three, but the process is we have reviewed four weeks worth of data uh, before we can take the next step towards uh, launching uh, the next phase. So as we saw, the first regions of Ontario jump into a phase uh, two approach. That same region, uh, four weeks later, is now jumping into a phase three approach where, for example, you know, you're allowed to, in a physically distanced manner, have in uh, in seated uh, in uh, you know, restaurants, uh, be seated inside restaurants. Um, you know, certain uh, activities were not allowed before, such as cinemas. Um, you're allowed to have, you know, with a physically distance in certain portion, you're allowed to have access to those um, gathering sizes in those regions have gone from inside up to 50 outside up to 100. So many people, you know, even when it comes to marriages and weddings, we're having uh, quite some difficulties getting some programs there. So this is all because of the hard work of what many of our businesses and people of Ontario have undertaken uh, to get to us to this place right now. We're at a place where we're seeing lower and lower numbers of COVID-19 cases uh, and that's exactly where we need to continue uh, to do and that is what we hope uh, to continue doing. So uh, the only thing I want to you know leave off with right now is uh, uh, at a time when small businesses you know stepped up to the plate uh, really came forward during the pandemic had to shut down their doors I think it's all incumbent on us to have that opportunity to support small businesses across the province. Anytime we can shop local, we should shop local. Anytime uh, we can go out to the main street, we can go out to the locally made in Ontario goods. I think we should always be supportive of those type of projects and look for new opportunities. I think uh, when we look across the province, when we look across the countries, um, I think there's a really good opportunity for us to take advantage of the current uh, uh, situation and create an opportunity out of what we've seen um, and see how Canada and Ontario can be leaders uh, in this uh, as we come out of it uh, from our side. So I don't want to take up too much time with my uh, comments. Uh, I also do want to extend my um, uh, Premier Ford was delivering, going to deliver a video message. He will, we will get that video message over to you. Uh, but uh, an official video message thanking them, uh, ICCC, um, you know, for all the great work that they're doing will be coming in, in the next couple of days. And so we'll have that over to you, hopefully, for the next the Thursday talk that you undertake. Uh, but it is a program, uh, you know, he, I just wanted to convey his best wishes to you and your entire uh, team for mode. And um, uh, we will we'll happily provide those remarks for you uh, very shortly. And I apologize we couldn't get them in, in time for this. But uh, the Premier, like Ajay was saying, is on the front lines in Windsor and uh, visiting businesses uh, and trying to do as much as we can to, to help them out. So uh, thank you for that. And I'll, I'll pass it back over to you, AJ. Thank you, Minister. I, mean, I, I really, really appreciate that. Like what you just said is we don't want to be in your shoes because everyone is facing one small issue, issue let's say, problem to look after or challenges that they have to face. 
you have to look after every Ontarian. So that is a major thing that you are doing and for uh, joining us. Without further ado, I think everybody wants to look into the interactive session that we are going to have with the chamber. So I would like to introduce again, once again, our uh, president and board. and start our interactive discussion uh, with the minister and as we all and i would be looking forward to listening to those answers as well thank you very much gentlemen please go ahead to aj uh, very good afternoon to all who are connected with us on this webinar thank you minister Sakarina, for your uh, special address and the kind words about the chamber and the activities that the chamber undertakes on behalf of our chamber, I congratulate Premier Ford and the entire Ontario government for proactively combating the pandemic so effectively. And we know to us all, I mean, the Premier has shown leadership, vision, and dedication in overcoming the challenges that our province has faced as a result of the COVID-19 outbreak. Minister, well, you've already provided us uh, with some insights into the next steps of reopening of the economy and what the government has been doing. We're going to further delve into through some of the questions to get more uh, meaningful perspective on the whole uh, situation. Honorable Minister, you, you recently completed uh, a year as the province associate minister of small business and red tape uh, production. So I would uh, like to ask you, I mean, your performance as a minister has been extraordinary, but in your own terms, what do you see as being the key achievements of your tenure so far? That's a great uh, question. I think, uh, you know, when I look back at a year, it's uh, it's funny, yeah, June, June 20th was one, uh, one year, so just a couple of days over a year. Uh, you know, I really look at, uh, you know, there was post-COVID, so pre-COVID, sorry, if I can put it uh, that way, this province under the leadership of Premier Ford after, you know, 15 years of a complete waste and mismanagement by the previous Liberal government, you know, we had an era of where 300,000 manufacturing jobs left this province. But then under the leadership of Premier Ford, a very business friendly uh, policies were brought into place. And, you know, right before COVID hit, so if you look all the way up to February 2020, this province in 18 months added uh, 300 uh, new 300,000 new jobs in the province of Ontario. And that was really done by making sure, you know, we uh, in, in the in, in, as of January 1st this year, we you know ended up reducing the small business tax cut. Uh, so we introduced a tax cut, which reduced the rate by 9%. Um, it's about making sure that businesses, business owners, um, you know, people that uh, need to be supported, that are creating opportunities and jobs, we're having uh, access to that. And we also had to reward them because we know when you support businesses, they're also able to hire more people, uh, employ more people, and they give back uh, into their communities. Um, so I think that was probably one of the key planks uh, 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 to, to, you know, one of the proudest parts of this government. It was our economic agenda. Now we're in a totally different situation. COVID has hit. Uh, but I think there's no one better positioned, you know, under the leadership of the premier uh, and our government to really take us forward and, and work towards uh, getting our economy uh, back on uh, uh, back on our feet. Uh, that's going to be really key and imperative. Uh, but if I have to really drill it down to that to one piece, I, I would really think it's my first piece of legislation that I was able to introduce where we saved businesses approximately $60 million in compliance costs by simply changing regulations uh, that worked better for people and smarter for business. That was really uh, the the key essence of my first term, I think, uh, uh, first year in, in government was really doing that. Um, but I also recognize so many opportunities. Um, you know, you see, you know, as, as small businesses in this province, you, you know, it's almost shocking that when we look at the entirety, there's over 400,000 small businesses in, in Ontario. Only 5% of SMEs uh, in Ontario right now export. So there's huge potential for Canadian companies to get into the space of exporting their goods um, or whether it's uh, to wherever they want, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, through links made by the Chamber of Commerce here or whether it's to our North American uh, counterparts. Um, that was probably the biggest opportunity that I realized that if, you know, small businesses could do one thing or we could promote one thing is to open up marketplaces for small businesses across the world uh, and ensure 
uh, that we somehow come up with opportunities that can give them a larger access to markets across the world uh, by encouraging more export oriented uh, uh, activities for some of these SMEs. Thank you, Minister. Uh, indeed, I agree. I mean, you had a very fruitful stint uh, serving the small business community in Ontario. And I think the achievements that you highlighted uh, that endorse that uh, position. And of course, the Chamber is also engaged in developing the opportunities for more exports, and uh, especially in the context uh, that we are bilaterally working with the Indian counterparts. So, definitely, that's an area we would be exploring more opportunities. Now, moving on to the reopening of the economy, as most of our small business owner members are keen to understand what they can expect from the government in terms of assistance and, of course, guidance. Uh, so the province uh, uh, announced uh, a, few, uh, a little earlier five months of interest or penalty relief uh, to file and make payments for majority of the provincially administered taxes. Uh, but I think uh, what we're hearing from not many surveys and interactions, some of the businesses uh, may not be in a position even to pay at that point of time. Will the province consider waiving these taxes altogether or could they be staggered over a longer period of time? to enable them to stay afloat? That's a great question. I think, you know, when the first announcements were made on this uh, specific uh, recovery plan, um, uh, I think what we can really uh, dwell into is we didn't know what we were coming up against in terms of COVID. So we had elements where, you know, some people were predicting this would be two weeks, three weeks, two months, four months. And so, you know, the first, uh, you know, Recovery Ontario uh, action plan was to get immediate relief out to businesses. So that was a, a suspension of and deferral of payments. Um, now, as we come back and now as we come towards, you know, August, September, when some of these payments are due, um, where we are taking submissions from businesses and trying to get an understanding of where those cash flow issues might exist or where those operational issues might exist um, and what other further supports the government needs to undertake uh, to help those businesses. So, um, for example, if we're talking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, de deferring those payments, uh, you know, to the future or extending those periods, uh, that is something that we're 100 percent taking into consideration. Uh, we're also seeing, you know, what else could be done from the government? You know, we came out with the commercial rent assistance program. Digital Main Street program, which is a seven fifty-seven billion a million dollar program for um, small businesses. Um, so, where else can we, you know, put money into? Um, you know, the government has a finite amount of resources that they can deploy. So, when we will do deploy these resources, we want to make sure we deploy them in an area where we can get the greatest return for that uh, technically investment of uh, taxpayer dollars. So, um, when we come back to that decision, uh, you know, feedback from. Uh, members of your chamber, feedback from small businesses across this province is going to be very critical uh, as we make those decisions. And, uh, you know, there's no one that's been hurting more than the small businesses of this province. And uh, as the economy, you know, is only entering into stage three for part of the province, uh, we're, we'll definitely take that into consideration as we move forward and think about what else we can bring to the table uh, for small businesses. Thank you, Minister. I'm sure I'm, I'm delighted myself hearing your words, and uh, I'm sure it will be well received by our small business owner members. And uh, you'll also be delighted to know, I mean, I think you heard earlier, me, uh, the Chamber also launched a special assistance program for small businesses to overcome the COVID-19 challenges. And uh, Vijay alluded to it during uh, his initial remarks. And I'm just briefly reiterating it uh, only to emphasize that it is completely pro bono service that we are offering where any small business owner can get uh, free consultation on range of matters. It could be from anything from taxation to IT to accounting to any other government uh, regulations, even for uh, legal assistance in terms of general information. So, I mean, uh, all small business owners are welcome to do that. Now, moving on to uh, my next question. A recent survey of small businesses uh, by the CFIB 
uh, revealed that almost 16% of Ontario's uh, small businesses are almost on the verge of closing. So again, I mean, just building on the previous question. So are we as a provincial government looking at any plans to help these businesses as well, who are almost on the verge of closure or going into bankruptcy? Yeah, uh, you know, when we look at numbers like that, uh, it, you know, it's heartbreaking to to really see the impact that COVID has had on small businesses across the province. And it's uh, uh, not just Ontario, it's across Canada, it's across the USA, it's across uh, um, wherever jurisdiction you look at, uh, uh, you know, the devastation to small businesses has been uh, uh, a huge impact. And so I think what one of the things that we really want to dwell into now is to make sure uh, that, you know, in the next phase of the recovery, in the next phase of Ontario's, you know, uh, action plan, what are some of those supports that we can bring? Um, you know, we haven't made those decisions as to what we need to support or what we need to, uh, you know, we're in the process of it. Um, but we really need input from small businesses to tell us where can we invest that would help them the most? What can we do? For example, um, a couple of weeks ago, we launched the Digital Main Street program. It's a $57 million program uh, aimed at small, small, small businesses. Uh, and it's going to help about 23,000 small businesses across the province. Uh, uh, some of those small businesses can access a $2,500 grant um, uh, to, you know, get their products, whether it's online or, you know, future proof their products or, or get more of an e-commerce website set up. Um, you can use that $2,500 to, um, you know, put a POS uh, system in place, software in place, whatever you think you can uh, use it for. Uh, in that program, we're also giving money for people who need to get to, into more of a digital, um, you know, marketing. If you do businesses that, that currently exist, do they use digital marketing? But here are services that we can provide you through funding from the government that can help you get digital services. Um, there's also consulting services offered from that. So we're trying to see there's a way for us to p position businesses to a certain direction, um, you know, by going digital primarily because we've seen, you know, behaviors have changed significantly over the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, I look, look at the example of my own parents. They probably never did any online shopping before COVID, but now, you know, they're so used to the Amazon swipe, swipe, swipe. Now they're just buying, buying, buying off online. So these are like significantly changing the way we do, you know, we operate. We, our behaviors are significantly changed. So what does the world, what does the economy look like six months from now? after you know almost four to five months of us completely having to shift our behaviors and what will exist now that won't exist you know six months from now or what will re-emerge or emerge that doesn't exist right now um, these are all you know very tough questions to answer but i think the best way for us to get that input is to talk directly to business owners who can provide us that input uh, and tell us where the government needs to invest to better support uh, small businesses sure Minister, you talked about uh, the digital Main Street program, and uh, it's almost about a month, I think, that since it was announced. And it is to cover almost 23,000 small businesses, as you were mentioning. So uh, during the last month or so, what has been the response uh, on that program? I mean, has it uh, taken off? In, our, in terms of our... Um... Uh, the intake to that program, um, I, I don't have the specific update as of today, uh, but we were getting hundreds, like thousands of applications within the first week of launching um, because, you know, it was it's the largest investment in Canada's probably in Canada's history and trying to take businesses digital. Um, and that's why it's such an important program. Uh, and, you know, kind of back to my first point where, you know, businesses don't have the opportunity, they haven't even thought about you know, export oriented businesses. They haven't kind of thought to go export, but in order to be export oriented, you need to have an online presence. You need to have an e-commerce presence. So, you know, we've got great partners across the province that are partnered up to, with the government to help deliver some of these services. But now more than ever, we need to go digital. Uh, businesses need to be digital. Business need, businesses need to go digital. And so I think that's been the really, um, you know, key part of driving that program and the success of that program so far today. Uh, has been the ability 
um, for or the interest in the digital aspect of it. And that's what the, is really driving the numbers on, on that program. Um, there's also, you know, future proof uh, shop here uh, that we've launched with that uh, funding stream as well. The RAP program that's administered through the Toronto Region Board of Trade, which is consulting for businesses that are a bit of a higher level than some of the smaller businesses. Um, so incredible work that's being done uh, on a lot of that and uh, uh, really going to help out uh, those businesses. And we encourage everybody to, to get into that program uh, and really invest in as much as they can into it. Thank you, Minister. I mean, these are very great initiatives. As you know, I mean, when we talk about our own community, the Indo-Canadian community, uh, which is more aggressively involved in you know, small businesses, and if we uh, analyze the uh, main industry sectors where they're involved, uh, I can think of two major ones, transportation or trucking is one, and the other one is the hospitality sector where we see a lot of our uh, community members involved. And both these industries have been impacted uh, severely. Transportation, not so much because of the essential services. Uh, some of them have been operational, but the hospitality, especially when we talk about restaurants, banquet halls, hotel franchises, I mean, they, they completely had no respect. So everything was kind of locked out. So now with the three fa phase three opening, we're talking about uh, still there would be physical distancing requirement, uh, capacity reduction of 30% or whatever. And that would still hamper their operations and adversely affect their revenue stream. So in terms of uh, these two sectors, especially hospitality, uh, is the provincial government uh, looking at specifically uh, for some special kind of assistance uh, for these uh, twin sectors uh, to tide over the crisis? There's a great question again, and I think, you know, when we look at both the hospitality sector and the transportation sector, two very unique and distinct sectors on their own. So if we're looking at the hospitality sector, one of the biggest drivers of hospitality is obviously tourism. And it's one of those things where, we, you know, uh, uh, consumer confidence is going to be very important. Until consumer confidence in the ability to travel is not back, um, it's going to almost be impossible to see the same rate of returns or to even see the same occupancy levels, whether you're talking about, you know, hotels uh, or even if you're talking about, you know, uh, restaurants for that matter. You know, we've seen restaurants open up in the space too with outdoor dining. Um, but even it took a while for people to get comfortable to, to get out of their house and, and to go, you know, die on a patio. So what we're dealing with right now is a significant uh, uh, potential issue around uh, confidence in the marketplace and how do we kind of drill down and improve consumer confidence. Um, the significant part of this and the equation is that, um, you know, COVID is still very real. People, uh, you know, are still very afraid of uh, the impact of COVID and what it can have and how it could potentially spread and impact uh, people. Um, so people are really kind of worried around, uh, you know, are worried around this. And so when we look at targeted uh, approaches, uh, you know, to date, the government hasn't, you know, targeted a specific industry uh, or even taken a targeted approach to any specific sector. Uh, but these are all, you know, items that we're going to continue to monitor and look at and see where we need to do that. So when we look at phase two of Ontario's economic recovery plan, um, that will be a very important consideration. You know, some people in the transportation industry even have probably seen increases in uh, revenues because, you know, anyone that's been, you know, transporting, you know, uh, su food supplies or, you know, uh, goods that uh, are essential, you know, they've been we've saw a record amount of requests or a record amount of supply being shipped out but then you know transportation in terms of um, auto auto manufacturing you know all of the auto manufacturers were shut down for four weeks so you saw significant losses in that so a lot of uh, you know a lot so many it's, it's such a complex issue that uh, uh, really needs to be drilled into but um, we take the advice from you know businesses and how can we better support them there's no way we can uh, see them, uh, you know, lose out uh, on, on, on all of the work. So that's why we've tried to make sure that whether it's, you know, the rental assistance program, um, you know, that's going to help the, the hardest hit uh, uh, venues, the hardest hit, uh, you know, hospitality areas, whether it's restaurants, uh, to a certain extent, other uh, institutions as well. Um, we really need to, to make sure that they get through this. And so in the future, uh, you know, my, my colleague, uh, Minister McLeod, 
um, just conducted a couple of almost a thousand um, consultations on on the tourism sector. So she's coming up with a plan right now to see how she can get uh, get that sector back up and running again through the hospitality side, the restaurant side, hotel side. So, um, you know, that's in the final phase. But if there's anyone that has any specific recommendations for the government on that, uh, we'd be happy to, to take those. And I can, you know, personally deliver those to Minister McLeod for consideration. Thank you, Minister. <clears throat> and uh, as you know, uh, all, all the provinces are taking serious measures to reduce the adverse economic impact of the pandemic and the lockdown. Uh, and we've also noticed that in some provinces, the provincial government is partnering with financial institutions to provide interest-free loans to small businesses to restart operations. Even last week, uh, like Ontario government also announced uh, the uh, Economic Recovery Act, uh, which lays the foundation to restart jobs and development uh, in terms of strengthening the communities and also to create opportunity for people in uh, every region of the province. And you are one of the ministers responsible for its implementation. Uh, would you uh, be able to share some of the broader parameters of that bill, uh, specifically Bill 197, uh, if you may, please? Yes, of course. So, yeah, Bill 197 is a uh, you know, central piece to getting um, this province uh, back up and running again. And I think, you know, our government really needed to make uh, um, changes uh, to get Ontario working uh, better, uh, get people back, uh, you know, to their jobs. Uh, businesses are counting on us to, to really kind of kickstart the economy. So, you know, the approach is a key planks of that uh, legislation is allowing the government to build transit faster. Uh, so transit oriented communities, you, do, you know, we came up with a, a fairly ambitious plan around um, subways, uh, subway lines in, in downtown Toronto, $30 million investment. Um, so to make sure we can, you know, build those faster. Um, you know, if we want to be able to build highways faster, we put in legislation uh, ability for the government to move quicker, um, you know, to be able to, uh, you know, uh, improve timelines. So as we start getting people under work, uh, you can get people to work. Um, you look at environmental assessments, uh, that there's it's that's a piece of legislation that hasn't been changed in over 50 years. Um, it can take up to six years to get an EA. Where by the changes that we'll make and within the, in the next week or so, we'll get those EAs down to less than three years um, at the most for the most complicated projects. So, very common sense changes. And you look at the Municipal Housing Act changes that are going to be coming in to allow for more, um, you know, housing to be built across the province uh, to allow. Uh, you know, greater transparency and uh, ability to, for marketplace. You know, we all struggle with the issue of uh, housing across the province. So how do we get projects up and uh, off the ground? Um, you know, anybody that wants to develop anything these days, you're, you're you know, almost stuck yet, whether it's in different levels of government for up to, um, you know, five to 10 years before you can even get a shovel in the ground sometimes, or five or four years, three years, the horror stories, you know, they're, they go across so many different, uh, uh, it doesn't matter what municipality you deal with. So streamlining some of those purposes has is going to be very key and important for us. So um, it's a really a, a broad piece of legislation that is going to tackle and aim to get people working again, whether it's infrastructure projects, transit projects, um, getting things built faster and quicker. Uh, that is exactly what we want to see. And, and that is exactly what that piece of legislation uh, will do by, uh, but also by at the same time, maintaining our highest uh, standards of safety and, and health and regulation. Thank you, Minister. Uh, I'm sure these are important provisions and will help the province overcome immediate challenges and also will have a very long, positive long-term impact. Uh, though I have uh, several other questions, uh, but considering the time constraints, I would now invite AJ to take over the session and ask the questions from our audience. Over to you, AJ, and uh, thank you, Minister Kariya, for answering the question. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pramod, uh, and thank you, Minister, for um, all those questions. I have been bombarded with a lot of questions. I'll try and uh, select and combine a few questions for you as much as possible, and uh, we appreciate your time in. One of the first questions which has come to me, and um, that is from quite a few uh, audiences on that, is phase three is uh, starting, but Brampton and Mississauga has been sort of, they say, been left behind because of the COVID uh, scenarios which have not gone down. But yes, I was amazed with um, uh, Bonnie Crombie when she said 
they've got zero uh, addition onto uh, COVID, and Brampton recorded also one of the lowest to, I think, about 10 or 11. That is one scenario. That's one question. So what's happening with these two cities, how the province is looking into one of the largest cities in Ontario to how to help them out, what can be done? The second question, which came combined from quite a few audience, is, is the demographics playing a role in terms of keeping the COVID there, which is also a home businesses? So two questions combined coming to you, Minister. Hey, Jay, both are great questions. Uh, and the first uh, question, you know, um, is not so much about uh, Brampton and Mississauga behind, you know, Brampton, Mississauga and Toronto. Um, the density of population here, the rate of spread here, um, is the reason why we weren't able to move to a phase three as quick as we were before. Um, and so that comes down to many different issues, in my opinion. I think, you know, again, with the demographics issue that, you know, I'll tie that into it. Every region of this province is so different. Uh, but, uh, you know, let's let's take for an example, a, uh, you know, a, maybe a, a house in, in Brampton or a house in Mississauga. Um, you know, Mississauga had a great day yesterday where they only recorded, you know, they recorded zero new cases. When we look at, um, you know, why maybe is it, why is it maybe that, you know, Brampton has more cases? You know, look at the average size, uh, not of the size of the house, but how many people live inside a house in, in maybe a Brampton. Um, you know, something that's very prominent in South Asian culture is uh, multi-generational homes. So if you have a house that has a uh, grandparent, grandfather, mother, father, kids, uh, and sometimes the kids even also have their own kids there. So, um, you know, we all know that uh, once an individual brings COVID into the house, um, you know, that is probably the, the easiest way to, for every other member of the house to pick it up. So you see higher number of cases, potentially not the only reason, but some of those cases is that living in multi-generational homes, you know, if you compare it to a house, maybe in Oakville or uh, in Toronto, where there might only be three people in a house compared to a house, an average house size in Brampton, which might have, you know, seven to eight people. So there are, there are, you know, uh, uh, differences in how COVID spread based on this cultural um, cultural uh, ways of living as well. Um, but I think what we have to do to be able to get through this is to uh, continue focusing on making sure that we're adhering to the guidelines that public health is setting out. So when they ask us to physically distance, when they ask us to uh, you know, limit the, the size of gatherings, it's really tough in South Asian culture because almost all of our events that we have you know, we have large families, I mean, whether it's weddings, you know, we have thousands of people at all our weddings. So it's very difficult sometimes to to be able to, to bring it down. But, you know, we really have to try to follow that as much as possible. Keep safe. Uh, and I'm confident that, you know, in the next uh, couple of weeks uh, after four weeks of data is available um, for the region of Peel and for the city of Toronto, we'll be able to move ahead uh, and get back uh, to stage three as well. Okay. Thank you, Minister Minsai. Minsai, like what you did mention, large families, big families come with their their amazing challenges, but also great, great uh, way to live in a family style. And I think that could be one of the reasons as well. But I have a few more questions to move on with. So thank you very much on that one. A lot of startups. This is a very, very um, great year. 2020 was the year where they said technology will be running the game. And um, all the lot of startup companies, all the new um, ones who wanted to start their businesses, January, February is where they lay their foundation is already in spring, they're ready to go. Now, a lot of businesses who were just about to start could not start, or some we were who were sole proprietors and they started and they're running. They are right now stuck with nothing for the last uh, four or five months, and they do not know how long their pipeline will allow them to move forward. What kind of help is there for the startups? as well as the sole proprietors who are there, which are not able to now survive after five months. They usually have three to four months of period where they can start. What kind of help is available for them? A really tough question for, you know, a lot of those you know, individuals, especially sole proprietors. Uh, I don't know if you might remember when the first program for commercial assistance rent, rent relief came out, uh, sole proprietor, uh, sorry, the um, uh, the forty thousand dollars small business loan from the government. So sole proprietors actually couldn't apply for it, and it was through our advocacy from the provincial level and all the other provincial governments that we really pushed that they include this as a criteria going forward because so many of them were left behind, and, and, and you know part of that forty thousand, ten thousand is also um, you know it, it could be in terms of a grant as well. 
Um, but, you know, that's where the, 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 uh, the unfortunate challenge is, you know, any type of program that we've tried to launch, we haven't tried to put a limit on, you know, how long have you been in business for, et cetera. Um, you know, you can access the, the digital Main Street program for the $2,500 grant uh, as long as you're a small business and you fit the criteria. And there's really not, not many restrictions on it other than, you know, you have to be less than people. So when we look at, uh, you know, the future, when we look at, uh, you know, what can we do as these businesses continue to, you know, um, try to open, it's been a couple of months now, uh, and their revenues, you know, even as they open in a socially distanced manner or physically distanced manner, um, that is the the million dollar question right now. And that is the question that, you know, as we sit down at policy, as we sit down uh, in terms of planning the economic recovery uh, you know, we need to hear from businesses what they expect us and need us to do to get to get them past that. So, what kind of supports is it? Supports in the terms of you know, in in the in the essence of grants, um, money being flowed through to businesses. Is it in, in terms of you know tax relief? Is it in terms of you know, credits? Um, you know, all of those type of programs is what we're really trying to to dwell into right now and and figure out and i think that's going to be critical for us as we go forward but sole proprietors are you know a, a key part of this economy and we need to make sure okay. that they continue to survive well, thank you minister I mean, uh, like i said it's it's not the easiest question to ask because you can take care of x number of people but there's always some that are behind and i think if there can be some programs that can help them in the coming months that might be a work for them. So uh, coming to the next question means uh, you hear worldwide, every country, every uh, province, every state in the US, everybody wants to promote the local businesses. So support local. So means if me and my family are going these days anywhere on the weekends, I try to have local craft beer and I ask them specifically when I walk in, which is the local craft beer closest to your home. So supporting them is the key. How? Can that be a major factor for the local businesses in Ontario to be supported? And the same thing can apply tomorrow in terms of exchange, cross exchange tourism between the cities. How can that program be uh, generated? I'm from the travel business minister. So I look into that the cross city um, moving of people, which is right now the key because flights are not coming. How can that be promoted in the coming, uh, for, let's say, summer and uh, fall wherever the um, keeping the social distancing in mind. If people can do that, what kind of programs are running for them? Because that will help the small businesses in smaller cities as well. We're going to see a lot more of that AJ as we go forward in terms of not being able to travel outside the country. So people are going to, you know, people in Ontario that maybe would have gone to the US or to travel, they're going to look to places within Canada. So that inner city, you know, travel. That's a key part of, I think, Minister McLeod's as, as you know, the Minister of Tourism, um, Heritage and Sport. That's something that's going to be really critical. Uh, there's so much to, to discover in, um, in Ontario, whether you go up north, you know, you go to Niagara Falls, you got the iconic areas, Muskoka, Cottage Country. Um, those are very, very, um, you know, tourist heavy areas. And now more than ever, over actually the last week or two weeks, if you look at those areas, that type of, uh, you know, domestic, you uh, uh, tourism is actually spiking. Uh, you're seeing a lot more traffic in those areas where people probably, you know, domestic to Canada might not have gone because they've been there before, but now there's really no alternative. And it's, you know, relatively speaking, you just look south of the border where we're way safer than anything in the U.S., right? So uh, people are feel more comfortable traveling within our own borders. But, um, you know, the first point you touched on, on the main shop local, and I'm really happy to hear that you say that, you know, because even if we shift our behaviors to shop made in Ontario, shop local, that could be billions of dollars of, um, uh, you know, economic impact for those small businesses. If, you know, one in 10 people made a decision, uh, you, know, a cog you know, a cognitive decision that, you know, I'm about to buy this, I'm about to eat this, I'm about to drink this, you know, do I go for the Ontario option or the non-Ontario option? If you go for the Ontario option, you know, you're automatically supporting Ontario businesses, you're supporting Ontario workers. Um, and that's, you know, I, I really hope we can do that, uh, especially during this time. And I think that's going to be critical to getting small businesses back on their feet. Um, thank you. <coughs> thank you, Minister. Uh, means you mentioned on that means I always have uh, looked into not focusing on the major like uh, Muskoka or Niagara Falls, 
I'm a guy who'd go to uh, Paris, Ontario, or Stratford, Ontario, and look into those smaller cities, which are also great to see, but you explore more uh, into those as well. Uh, Minister, one more question coming in, uh, just uh, coming in for the municipalities, which are right now um, in major, um, I would say, challenges that they are facing. How are we going to help them in the coming time? Um, hello? Or did I lose you guys? Okay. Um, how are the municipalities going to be helped for their taxes, especially because they can, they have already pushed their mortgages. They have already pushed their expenses, but taxes uh, for the annual to them. Yeah. So if you look at um, uh, your announcement that uh, just came out today, uh, you know, one of the key things that our government really pushed on was getting a fair deal for Ontario. So um, when we looked at, uh, um, uh, you know, the amount of money, uh, if you look at just balance sheets uh, between provincial and federal governments, all, all premiers of Canada were asking the federal government to step up uh, and, to, um, and to support. They wanted uh, they wanted the government, you know, a couple a week ago or two weeks ago, you might have heard Premier Ford say this. They wanted the government to accept uh, 14 billion dollars across Ontario to support municipalities. Sorry, not Ontario, all of Canada. Uh, but, you know, we're 36 percent of Ontario. And so we would deserve, you know, our fair share in that funding. And unfortunately, they weren't willing to, to do that. And so Premier Ford and uh, many of the other premiers stood up to the, the prime minister and asked him to. Um, you know, uh, increase that funding. And today we've seen uh, about to $19 billion be flowed to uh, the provinces uh, to help support municipalities, uh, 7 billion of which will come to uh, the, um, the province of Ontario. So I think Premier Ford did a great job, you know, where it was 14 billion, they were refusing to go higher than that. Premier Ford negotiated up to $19 billion, seven of which is now gonna come to the province of Ontario to get our fair share. And I think that's gonna be really important. So that will really help support municipalities through this, whether it's, you know, large fast growing municipalities like in the Peel region in, the, in, in, in Toronto, um, you know, York region, whatever you wanna, whatever region you look at, all of them are, are really struggling. And, and I think these funds will really be supported, um, will really be there to support them uh, through this as they've offered those deferrals as well. Oops, for, um, for every business. Now I have uh, two questions combined coming to you. I'll have to throw two at a time uh, because it's services sector, which is especially in the hospitality side, because there are so much dependency on them because we focus on a hotel, we focus on a restaurant, we focus on a banquet hall. But we have to realize that there is a support mechanism running for them, which is their support services for the hospitality. So that's one area. How are we tackling that? Because with the, uh, let's say, relaxation of uh, for uh, the um, in the phase three, it's still not going to be enough, and their survival is right now at stake as well. The second question, which you brought it in yourself in your answer when you told me about your parents are shopping online, right? So I means even in my home is happening. There's when you're shopping online, you're actually targeting directly the retail market, which is the shops and bricks which are there. Their survival comes into stake. And knowing Amazon is coming big in distribution center all over Ontario, they are actually going to be taking away business from the retail stores. How are those two going to be affected and what are we doing for them in the coming months? You it's know, a big question, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> When we look at, you know, changes in behavior and, you know, changes in the landscape of the economy, I think that's a key part of it. You know, how does, when we look at, you know, six months from now, if we all are crystal ball, you know, what does the world look like? Um, the one thing I will say about Amazon is, though, they, they also provide a platform for many small businesses to get their products out to much bigger markets as well. So, um, you know, when you, I had a chance to, you know, tour on Amazon and their distribution facility here and, you know, I have one uh, in my riding of Brampton South. Um, they support a ton of small businesses, but you're completely right. You know, when we look at those brick and mortar shops, uh, you know, that line Main Street, uh, Main Streets across the province, um, those are going to be critical for us to support. That's why, you know, we're really pushing the shop local, uh, shop made in Ontario uh, approach because we know that that will help uh, support those um, industries through this. And when we look at targeted approaches, you know, the first set of commercial emergency rental relief program was only up until 
uh, June, but we've extended it for July because we recognize that uh, the um, the you know phase three not being in place right now uh, causes significant issues for you know retailers in some certain circumstances, you know banquet halls in some circumstances, or the service providers who haven't had an opportunity to get revenue. So you know we continue to extend those programs out, and and you know we look into the future and we look into you know what other kind of programs uh, or support services can we add. That's a you know that's a, a key consideration for us to to drill down into that and make sure that we uh, bring the right um, uh, supports in place. So you know those those type of businesses can change, but there will be a shift in behavior uh, that we've already seen, uh, and that behavioral shift uh, uh, is you know it's still to be seen how long it lasts or how permanent it will become. But that will also present opportunities for small businesses, whether they're technology businesses or other uh, others as well. So I'm 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 looking forward to uh, you know being a part of the solution to help those businesses through this. No, Minister, I, I agree with you. But like I said, there'll be pros and cons on both the sides. Uh, the behavior shift is going to, especially let's say what we are doing right now, we would have done face to face. But a lot of people will be working from home, which means a lot of offices will get vacant. Uh, into working and that also will have a major impact in the coming times. We can't judge. We don't have a crystal ball. Any one of us for sure. I have one last question, which I will take because I've been bombarded with so many other questions. For especially for the South Asian community, as well as uh, living a lot of uh, communities, which are living in brown where the numbers are still uh, not to the mark where you want to watch them for four weeks before they come down. What kind of education systems can be placed so that they can actually come out and support the small businesses where you work and live at the same time. Mississauga and Brampton are very much the heart and soul for uh, Ontario as well. What kind of systems are in place or what kind of education process? Because you can increase fines. Will they be the per way to stop or will they be an education system? Quick education system. Yeah, that's a really good question. Again, a you know, great, uh, very engaged audience that you have. So. Uh, you know, engaging that and uh, that uh, system and really bringing it together. Um, you know, you look at digital, the digitalization of even universities right now. You look at uh, you know what they've been able to accomplish. Uh, you know, work and uh, educate yourself in those the same city, uh, cities. Uh, that's going to be important. I think uh, that's going to be really critical. Um, even when we look at it from a scale of you know people trying to relearn or you know engage new skills that are going to come out of this, you know where are the gaps, talent gaps that exist in the economy, and where can we you know train ourselves to be better in those or train ourselves to be a part of the, that economy? Um, you know now that we've gotten a lot more used to the online settings, I think in the past couple of months people are more comfortable with taking those courses or classes, whether it's students, whether it's you know postgraduate students. Um, that will be key, I think, uh, to getting people uh, learning again and to getting people all back on their feet, because I think um, they'll need to do that uh, to, to stay relevant in the workforce, I think. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Uh, but also uh, because it's such a competitive marketplace uh, uh, as well, right? So we always need to be on top of it. So when we talk about education, when we talk about business, they go hand in hand. Uh, and uh, one of the biggest advantages uh, to Ontario's market is when you talk to you know companies, I have the opportunity to sit down with CEOs, international CEOs. I have the opportunity to sit down with businesses from all over the world. And one of the things they always say is that Ontario's advantage is their diversity and how smart their population is. The academic institutions here, uh, you know, turn out some of the smartest um, graduates. You look at uh, Waterloo, you look at University of Toronto, any university, Ryerson, Laurier, you know, they've had uh, incredible opportunities and they produce incredible students so that, uh, um, you know, companies from across the world really look uh, look up to and, and want to support. No, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Minister, on that. Um, I think that um, that's the questions I will be taking. I just wanted to thank you uh, personally, Minister Sukaria, for joining us today. You have been an immense uh, help in giving the message to uh, every Indo-Canadian as well as the small businesses in Ontario. So we thank you uh, for your support sincerely. Any uh, last few words you want to say to the Indo-Canadian community as well as um, the small businesses in Ontario, what message would you like to give it to them? Uh, first of all, I just want to, once again want to really thank the Indo-Canadian Chamber of Commerce for giving me this opportunity to be a part of this discussion, uh, and thank uh, Pramod for his you know leadership uh, throughout this, and AJ for 
uh, the great discussion and VJ as well. Um, you know, I look forward to continuing to engage and see where, you know, we can support your members uh, through this pandemic and look at the new opportunities that will exist. You know, the one thing I want uh, business owners from across the province to really recognize is that this government, you know, was probably one of the friendliest pro business governments before this pandemic. We're going to do anything and everything to support businesses through this pandemic. And after this pandemic, we want to be there, you know, side by side. Um, you know, so don't ever hesitate to reach out to us uh, with suggestions, ideas that you think the government can take forward and implement uh, in, in the days, in the months, in the weeks uh, ahead, because this isn't going to be, you know, there's no magic light switch that we can turn on and off and everything will be great. This is going to be a tough road, uh, but we're all in this together. And I'm confident that if all of us continue to work together, we'll be able to get through this and support uh, our businesses right through the right through to the end. So I appreciate uh, once again for the opportunity and I look forward to one time and hopefully in the next couple of weeks or months uh, speaking in person as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Minister. I really appreciate means I want to and from my side as well is that I always believe tough times don't laugh last tough leaders do. And so is the Ford government and so is Indo Canada Chamber of Commerce because we are one of the oldest uh, business chambers for Indo Canadians in Canada, one of the largest as well. And we look forward to be by your side in every step that you take. I will hand over to my colleague uh, Vijay, who needs to uh, do a little bit of formality. So we request everyone to stay on board because an event like this just does not happen overnight. It requires a lot of effort from a lot of people to put it together. I want to uh, thank your staff as well and our colleagues, but uh, Vijay, please take it away. Okay. Thank you very much, AJ. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Sokaria. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Pramod Goelji. Uh, I think um, just sitting here and listening to this, I think we're in very good hands, uh, Minister Sakaria. Um, this is, you know, uh, I think, um, you know, as, as AJ said, you know, it, in tough times, people's caliber comes across. And I would definitely like to, you know, it, it did come across your knowledge of everything that you you know, on the on the difficult topics about Amazon and all of that, I think you did have the right answers, and and we we are very happy to to that you you are in the position that you are in, and and just to add to what AJ said, I think in the even during the Great Depression, a lot of the companies that were formed in Great Depression actually were companies that embodied those those value systems, and and really turned out to become companies that that stood stood out later in history. People, uh, companies like GE companies like IBM. And I think, you know, maybe out of this would also come in some big companies. So on that note, I'd like to thank our, our technology partner, Tangentia. Uh, I'd like to thank also um, some of our sponsors, uh, our annual sponsors, uh, uh, Turkish Airlines, TD Bank, ICICI Bank, uh, Peter and Paul. I'd like, also like to thank uh, sector sponsors, uh, RBC, TELUS, Raymond James, Seneca, SBI Canada, um, and, and, and also our uh, you know, T20, as well as our uh, media partners, PTC, um, the Weekly Voice, and, and Y Media. And, and also, we'd like to thank uh, everybody in the audience, everybody that's been uh, patiently listening to us. You know, those of you who have been attending all our sessions, thank you very much for attending again. Those of you coming in today for the first time, I hope you enjoyed uh, our event and will join us for the next Thursday talks. And if you have any inquiries, if you want to become a member of the Indo-Canadian Chamber of Commerce, please uh, do send us your uh, your membership request. Or if you want to avail of the Small Business Youth Program, also write to us at ICCC at ICConline.org. Now, on that note, I'd like to, again, thank everybody here. I, I'd like to give um, Pramodji, if you have last 30 seconds, if you want to say anything to everybody. Over to you, Pramodji. Uh, I would like to sincerely uh, thank uh, Minister Sakaria for taking the time and to be with us and share his views uh, about the reopening and what all the provincial government is doing to assist our small businesses. Thank you, uh, Minister Sakaria. Thank you, everyone, for joining with us today. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All the best. Okay.
प्रमोद जी लाइव वीडियो स्टॉप ओके इज द रिकॉर्डिंग स्टिल ऑन